have gone for me though. And Graham Eady. Yes. Halifax. <laughs> yes. What a, what a re- weird running style that guy had. <laughs> anyway, um, but the, the, the biggest revelation for me was the watching the seventy three final, and um, a new love for Fev, and how he's an absolute spit. <laughs> You know, it, it it could be Paul Newell of playing, just just balding with long sideburns. You was, Absolutely well, I was amazing. watching that game thinking, how many of these people actually are related to the people I know with those names? <laughs> well, there's absolutely no doubt in their relation. Let's put it that way. <laughs> they, it, it, it looked, I mean, it looked like a you know a Paul Newell who just had a a bit of a harder life. Let's put it that. Way. <laughs> that was um, an yeah. unmistakable feature of that game that all of those players looked. 10 years older than players of the same age now. Yeah. I, 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 so obviously, with it being on uh, uh, TV, we were watching it um, together. And, um, and I, I, it's one thing, I exactly the same thing I remarked to Anna about how sinewy all their legs were compared to kind of players nowadays. The, the kind of body shapes are completely different, but also the kind of the, the, the complete lack of hair. <laughs> The the, the 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 you know the the facial arrangement that oh, the, some of the some to of the be guys goal kicker in that area had to have absolute diggers didn't you yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah no no I, I absolutely love that 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 it's, um you know the format's brilliant it kind of it's it's very um, accessible for you know your kind of casual fans so so yeah, yeah that 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 was really good to watch and it's it's well presented isn't it as well uh, yeah you know, Chappers is a great presenter um, yeah. Yeah, it was good. It's good, um, and the... even though it showed the '98 uh, <laughs> Challenge Cup final, which was the first fa- Challenge Cup final I ever went to, uh, it made up for it, didn't it? Either side of that for Wigan fans, and I, well, guess, it... I guess the last show made up for it for other fan bases as well that missed out this time around, like Saints and people like that. It, it, it was interesting that the, the, uh, it felt like the the little um, um, VT that they did. Um, about Wigan's kind of winning run, it felt like they were just putting that in just to kind of say, look, we're really sorry, Wigan fans, but we're going to have to show it again. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we, we 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 haven't forgotten you were great in the eighties and nineties, honest. But <laughs> and it, watching that, it did remind me just how, like, uh, just just how half a beat off everything was in that performance from Wigan. It was. Mm. It was not. It, it was not there. There was. Uh, I remember that spell in the second half when it felt like every pass went behind the man, every pass went into touch. Um, you know, it was. Uh, it was a horror show. It, it. It goes down as a classic because of like the upset nature of it and the underdog yeah. nature of it and that side of it. It certainly wasn't a classic in the same way that that '87 final. Um, was a classic where both sides were at the peak of the game no it was uh, it was tactically very astute yeah from um from uncle two scores wasn't it and and you know that the way that they played was matt Crowther was... and nick pinkney yeah Pin curse curse on us <laughs> <laughs> but you know that you know kicking out wide you know kind of taking advantage of robinson's you know lack of height you know it, it Tactically, it was brilliantly done. Um, but yeah, you, you, you know, as you said, you, you, you just, it wasn't your day, was it? And that's no. just the way it was. No. You, you had plenty. But exactly. on, a, on a positive note, though, I have to say, it reminded me how good that um, uh, the, the try from the 2011 final was. The, 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 the Tompkins special. Oh, God, that yeah. was an unbelievable try. And it Fantastic. wasn't like he outran slow players it was it was Danny Maguire and it was Brent Webb that he yeah <laughs> you know it was Danny Maguire that he just evaded and it was Brent Webb that completely couldn't cope with which way he was going to go or not um for, for Joel's part of it and obviously Sam was going nowhere when when he picked up the ball and, and, and scanned across the field I think there were some fantastic tries in in the um in the Saints Halifax game as well which kind of it's great to see great tries on a on a big stage, but that Joel Tompkins try is the best Challenge Cup final try that we've seen. I think at the at the New Wembley, um, I'm obviously biased, yeah. but being in the stadium, I was sat in the top tier, 
Um, and you could you could see it unfold as they went because it was kind of going away from the Wigan end. You could see right. it. You could see everything on the because you get you got such a great view wherever you sat in that stadium really but from the top you really do see where all the pieces move um and having watched sam Tompkins already for a couple of years you kind of sensed what he could do or what have you and yeah it was oh it was just amazing yeah that that it probably, i would agree with you about the best try i i do have to point out the the try saving tackle from Pendlebury for Halifax yes um, was an unbelievable effort yeah. that kind of knocking the ball out the, you know he was over the line you know that you know match winning try and he just knocks it out of his hand unbelievable After he'd scored play. a drop goal as well yes you know he'd sort of I don't if, even if think we he got the last on that we'd be saying he went both ways in that game yeah I, I don't think he won the Lance Todd I think it was somebody else uh yeah, it was the halfback who won it. I think it was the halfback, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, no, no, some 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 great matches, really great matches. And then the only the other other thing I watched, I watched the 2000 final um, on our league, which was um, yeah, it was nice to go back to to remember that one and uh, th- remembering like three days before when the pitch was under three feet of water and. No one thought it was going to happen, and you know you're going up in trepidation, thinking it wasn't going to happen. And first trip up to Murrayfield, and yeah, great final, fantastic, um, fantastic memories for me that one. Yeah, first first uh, first Challenge Cup win that I'd seen, and yeah, it was fantastic for me. Well, that was the first. Oh yeah, I guess it... yeah, it would be, yeah. I had to yeah, wait until 2002, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I watched some of the old Magic Weekend games that Wigan put on. Um, it kind of passed me by a bit that Wigan had the, have the best record at Magic Weekend because it didn't feel like it when we lost last year uh, <laughs> against Warrington. <laughs> but actually, um, yeah, we, we, we've won eight and drawn two. Uh, and it's those those drawn games are the are the fun games to watch because like, there's a bit of intre- bit of trepidation that we might not win a game and I'm watching back on that. Why am I watching back a game that we might not win? <laughs> 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 but ultimately, yeah, that was a so there were some great performances in there. But the sort of um, one where uh, Gareth Hark had a really good game, but um, then had a really good scrap, and and there was. Um, there was a, the fantastic uh, performance against Warrington in 2018 when Josh. It was I think it might have been the first time we played against Josh Charlie, maybe the second time actually, once he was back in a, in, in rugby league. But um, Liam Marshall skinned him on the outside and then threw that inside ball to George Williams and and then that, that what what watching that back then what reminds me of is that was the day we all found out well the next day was the day we all found out that Sean Wayne was leaving um, leaving the club after that performance <laughs> so uh, so yeah um, that's all I've been watching but the the 2000 final I I, I didn't watch that game back on our league uh, uh, on Saturday evening so Tell me more about that one because I can't remember. I can't even remember that final. I don't even know okay. I watched it. <laughs> well, coming into it, we'd we'd won every game of the year, and Leeds hadn't won a match, obviously being uh, other than in the cup. That so they'd won, they'd lost all the league matches, and, and so obviously the final final was a lot earlier, weren't they? At that stage, they'd won the last Wembley final again. They'd won the last uh, Wembley won. final uh, famously. Yeah, Lee Rivet with all his tries and everything. Um, and it's it's funny what, what the couple do to you because I think this game kind of destroyed Leroy's confidence, really, because it was a couple of couple of bombs uh, early on. He didn't take them. And uh, Withers had a couple of early tries. Um, famously, it was the, the um, chip over the top for, um, that McAvoy did for himself. He scored that in the first half. Um, and we actually had quite a convincing lead beers, at halftime. Yeah. You what's that? He still hasn't sent me any beers. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Nathan, get it sorted. Um, what else? Uh, it's, it's one thing to say, 
um, old uh, old Barry Mack should have been sent off in this match. First five minutes should have absolutely <laughs> been sent off. He absolutely he elbowed Henry Paul right in the head, deliberately, maliciously. Nowadays, he would have been gone. We well, didn't put question. Henry Paul off, did he? He, he took over the lad's trophy. No, no. He, 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 yeah, but, you know, he, he could have... Um, t- I tell you now, he would have definitely been off under concussion protocol nowadays, <laughs> without question. Um, but, you know, it, it didn't put him off. Um, but, yeah, Leeds actually came back in the second half, and it was it was only six points in the end. But, but yeah, it was... Um, it was one of those kind of games. It was a monkey off the back for, for Bradford after losing so many finals. And, yeah, it was a very important uh, a very important match for us. Good stuff. Uh, right, let's... Um, who were the loose forwards in that game? Let's have a look. It was Brad Mackay was playing loose forward for Bradford. Yeah. And it was Andy Hay for, um, for Leeds. Right, I think Andy Hay is one of the sort of underrated back rowers of that era actually I, I think he was a good player in, in the second row or in the loose forward position but um, I, I mentioned that because we're now going to go on to talk about the loose forward position Alan so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what people have got up, up the sleeves for us <laughs> Right, we're on to our final position as we've gone through the whole side. And we've been talking about our favourite players in these positions. Um, I guess there's some people who might listen to the podcast who are rugby league fans who aren't super down on who plays where, what each position does, that sort of of, of thing. Um, and what it occurred to me, because Sandy was sort of talking about this sort of things when we did the, the quiz the other day and how she's trying to learn where the different players play by sort of relating them to who plays in that position for the wolf pack and how they play and that sort of stuff and obviously she'll have had to in loose forward terms she'll probably have to get used to a couple of different styles of playing that position as well because now they've got john wilkin who's a ball playing loose forward but um before that they were probably more of the the three props type of of yeah. playing a loose forward um so so yeah so how do you before we get into players, how do you how do you feel the position has changed during your time watching the sport? Because you've probably been into the sport slightly longer than than me. Um, I I have a, a notion of the kind of loose forward who would deputise at standoff when the standoff was injured kind of era of, of Farrell and Skullthorpe. Um, so you, you're talking there a guy who sets up more play. But what what do you think of how the positions transitioned? <sighs> It has changed, and I think it. I think we definitely look back at those kind of ball playing loose forwards with a level of fondness, don't we? That that you by play, playing a third prop there, or asking the loose forward to to play more like a prop, um, you, we feel like we're losing something in terms of some of the skill set that you see. Um, <sighs> He seemed to because obviously we've talked about second rows and in, in many ways when I think back as to some of the players a lot of them tend to be interchangeable you know when they, when we talk about back rowers they tend to you know 11 12 13 um, certainly internationally they tended to be quite interchangeable um, but yeah is I don't when I think about when I think about loose forwards I think my the two names that really jump out at me a ball playing ones particularly um and then they're not they're not from my team either so it, it's interesting that that i my i think i have a tendency to prefer the ball playing loose forward to more of a bulldozing type what about you yeah i, I obviously i i like the ball playing ones uh, but i don't think i don't think if you go back they they i think in the in the past they weren't necessarily hugely different always to um other people in the pack but yeah like you say now probably we're in that era where you you uh you is is, it's more like a third prop forward it's more like a third you know big guy ball carrier it might be someone like you might put someone in there like james graham liam watts someone like that who can play a bit as well 
Um, 